It's time to spring into something delicious with HelloFresh. Every week you get fresh pre-portioned ingredients with recipes delivered to your door. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code MLM16 at hellofresh.com slash MLM16. Imagine you just bought a new console that's sold by your favorite rapper. For many, this can be extremely exciting as you sit and wait for your new product to arrive. But soon, months have passed since you ordered it and still no console. You go to email support and are met with either a sketchy looking Gmail account or a warning page saying that you might be getting hacked. The console never shows up and you never get your refund. Now, imagine that happened to thousands of people because it did. The Soldier Game is just one of the many scams that pop culture icon Soldier Boy has orchestrated throughout his career, and as time has gone on, they only get worse, leaving thousands of disappointed fans in the wake. And welcome to Multi Level Mondays. I'm the Illuminati, and today we will be talking about Soldier Boy and his wide variety of schemes and lies throughout his life in the limelight. Interestingly enough, the rapper's entire career can be widely attributed to a massive bait and switch scheme he used on LimeWire to promote his music. From there, his scams have only grown and he continues to pump out new businesses that seem to quickly explode. So what has Soulja Boy been up to for all these years? Well, let's get into it. DeAndre Cortez Way, otherwise known as rapper Soulja Boy, exploded into the music scene in late 2007. Before this, he was like most young rappers selling his CDs at school, but then he was given a laptop and as he put it, never did that shit again. At just 15 years old, Soulja Boy made his own Wikipedia page trying to get his name out. Written in the third person, he details his musical development. By the end of the short page, he says, "'As of now, Soulja Boy is sure to land a deal soon. Soulja Boy is the next big thing to arise in the hip hop scene.'" However, and humiliatingly, after only one minute of being live, the post was taken down because it did not credibly indicate the importance or significance of the subject. And this kind of makes sense because considering at the time, Soulja Boy was virtually unknown in the music industry. But when he did finally break into the music scene, no one seemed to understand how his now hit song, Crank That, became an American sensation in such a short amount of time. But as it turns out, the rapper had actually found a sneaky way to spread his music to a massive audience using LimeWire. His plan was simple. You know about Rick Rolling? It's where people add a clickbait title and a YouTube video music or link or something. And then when you click on it, you would immediately be greeted with Rick Astley saying, Well, in 2007, Soulja Boy did something like this, only instead of people accidentally downloading the Rick Astley classic, they would inadvertently be downloading one of the rapper's songs. So here's what happened. He would simply upload his music to LimeWire, then post the title as something like Britney Spears, 50 Cent, Michael Jackson, or any other famous and popular artist of the time. People who wanted to download their favorite artist's music would then click the link and were instead met with music from Soulja Boy. In an interview with The Daily Beast, Soulja Boy said that after uploading his music to LimeWire using the strategy, it just started getting millions of downloads. It was so fast, like overnight. And he wasn't lying. Soulja Boy's Crank That quickly amassed fans and the rapper's name started rising in the music industry. And by May of 2007, he scored himself a deal with Interscope Records. Then Crank That rose to the top of the charts, spending seven weeks on the Billboard Hot 100 list. The absolutely viral dance associated with the song was being done at weddings, dances, and in living rooms alike. Perhaps not surprisingly, the song also became the first song to reach 3 million digital copies sold, surpassing Daniel Powder's Bad Day, which had reached 2 million copies a little over a year earlier. From there, Soulja Boy's fame just continued to rise. He released hit after hit and became a massive cultural phenomenon. But the music wasn't the only thing he was releasing. He also became a notorious for selling scams and selling Twitter engagements, knockoff game consoles, lying about giant contracts, endorsing an infamous pyramid scheme called Wake Up Now and stolen hoverboards. There literally seemed to be no end to his scheming. And I mean, he himself has even said, I was always tricking people, just trying to get my name out there. So let's get into some of his scams throughout the years. In 2011, TMZ announced that Soulja Boy had bought a $55 million jet for his birthday. TMZ claimed that according to his management team, later announced to be Shy Storm, that the rapper had bought the jet as a 21st birthday present to himself. Originally, the jet was only a measly $35 million, but according to his team, he was planning to spend an additional $20 million to add 12 custom Italian leather seats, flat screen TVs, four liquor bars, a special travertine tiled floor, and Brazilian hardwood cabinets. And this seemed all really odd since according to the New York Daily Times, Soulja Boy had only earned $6 million the year before. Despite this, the rapper did confirm the news on a radio show in Miami. When the host asked them if he had bought the plane, he responded by saying he was G5 status. 
Additionally, according to TMZ, which keep in mind it's TMZ, so there's that. When the reporter asked him if he had bought a plane, he responded by saying, hell yeah, I bought it. But just a couple days later, it was reported that he had not in fact bought the jet. Again, not overly surprising considering the cost of greatly overvaluing his earnings from previous years. After a few days, it does seem that Solja's or at least his manager's lie had gone on long enough. His spokesperson, Greg Miller, told TMZ and others that the elaborate rumors were not true. So no private jet for the birthday boy. But a short time later, he was again in the news for a scam connected to his hoverboard brand, Soldier Boards. In 2015, hoverboards were a cultural phenomenon. Anyone who was anyone seemed to be riding these things from Justin Bieber to Nick Jonas to Nicki Minaj. Before long, everyone wanted these futuristic like segues without handles and the industry absolutely exploded and everyone wanted to become involved. One of the companies, Funky Tree, became instantly popular and sought after by celebrities after a video of Kendall Jenner riding went viral on Instagram. Soon, Soulja Boy was one of those celebrities and after months of repeatedly asking the company to send him one, he finally received their hoverboard named the Funky Duck, which these names are just great. Only a few days after receiving the board, he placed his own brand of boards up for sale on a website that was apparently created in such a hurry that it still had the dummy text on the about page. The new board, which he aptly named the Soldier Board, was available in two colors, red and green, and was available for the ultra affordable price of $1,500. The only problem, well, at least according to the Funky Tree Company, the board he was advertising was actually their board. He merely slapped some Soldier Boy stickers on them and began selling them as his own. Co-founder Matthew Waxman told Wired, he started posting, hey guys, come by my soldier board and he's standing on our funky duck. Now, apparently this was a relatively common thing in the hoverboard industry. Companies would simply take others boards and rebrand them as their own. Why this was a thing in the industry that was perfectly common and allowed, I'm not sure. But regardless, Soldier Boy decided to become one of the people following this trend. However, it came back to bite him when his hoverboard company became the victim of a massive credit card scam. Shortly after launching his own hoverboard brand, it was announced that 75% of the purchases made on Soldier Boy's website were fraudulent. Perhaps this isn't incredibly surprising considering how fast the website was put together. But now the rapper found himself responsible for over $175,000 to the payment processing company Stripe. In hopes to avoid having to pay for the scammers, he emailed the company saying, I need help, all the payments are fraud and it sent my account to negative because they all say they weren't authorized. Please help in any way you can, thanks. I don't want to have to pay all this money because of frauds. Is there any way to reverse these payments and get my account to good standing? Unwilling to pay the balance and in an effort to stop the continuous fraud, Soulja Boy eventually shut down the website and just like that, he was out of the hoverboard business. I didn't find if he ever ended up paying the balance or not, but just one year later, he found himself in the news yet again when he announced that he was going to be the recipient of a $400 million endorsement deal. In May, 2016, Soulja Boy tweeted a $400 million deal confirmed. I still think they lowballed me though. I was thinking two to 3 billion. A few months later, multiple news outlets reported that he was referring to a supposed $400 million endorsement deal with World Poker Fund Holdings. In a press release of the deal, the company announced that the rapper would mobilize his network to promote the company and join their new venture, celebrityworld.com, which was meant to be a celebrity owned gaming site for in-flight entertainment. According to Forbes, who decided to do some digging on the ridiculously high endorsement deal, the company valued the new in-flight gaming system at $570 million. The company said that the new game would allow people to see live dealers and casinos will actually have virtual tables where the dealer's dealing to virtual people while they're at their computer or on a flight. But although the company had a lot of wishful thinking of their worth of their new system, by the time Soldier Boy had made the tweet, World Poker Fund Holdings was only worth 52 million and they had losses of 400,000 the year before. So how was a company worth $50 million supposed to be paying someone 400 million to promote their product? Well, they weren't. While the deal was capped at $400 million, it was based on a hopeful $500 million evaluation and was to be paid through stock and revenue sharing. It's quite possible that Soldier Boy simply didn't understand his contract or the inner workings of his deal, but regardless, what he posted was mostly untrue. Even the company spokesperson, Michael Byrd, told Forbes that he had really kind of jumped the gun. He went on to say, He got really excited and he tweeted something he probably shouldn't have tweeted. He was getting a lot of pressure from within the entertainment community, so he wanted to put a statement out. Obviously, the company's market cap is at $51.8 million. There's no way they could cut a $400 million deal. Endorsement deals are calculated on a lot of different factors. This is not a fully cash transaction. Maybe Bird is right and Soldier Boy just got a little overexcited, or maybe he didn't understand the contract or how his deal was actually structured. 
but maybe he has a long history of stretching the truth and scamming, and this was just another one of those. Who knows? Regardless, this would not be the last time Soulja Boy would stretch the truth to scam his fans. One of his most famous scams was still forthcoming in the manner of a gaming console and a snazzy watch. But before we jump into those really well-known scams, including of course, Soldier Games, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. Paying off high interest debt can feel discouraging. You keep making payments, but your interest basically cancels it all out. Well, Upstart can help you pay down that debt to get back to living your life. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan and you can do it all online. Rather than looking at only your credit score, Upstart considers other factors as well, like your current employment, income, and your credit history, all to find you a smarter loan rate. You can check out rates online without impacting your credit score for loans between $1,000 and $50,000. So it doesn't matter if you're trying to consolidate high interest debts, maybe pay off your credit cards, or get some money to start a new project. Upstart is here to help. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com MLM. That's upstart.com slash MLM. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Upstart.com slash MLM. Watching Netflix without using ExpressVPN is like going to the casino and only being able to play the slot machines. Why limit yourself like that? The big money's somewhere else. Simply put, if you're able to log into your Netflix account from somewhere else in the world, you're able to see a ton of different shows that may not be available in your own home country. And it's super easy. I just opened the app. I selected a different country. Like I wanted to see what was going on in the UK. So I went ahead and clicked England and tapped one button to connect. And then when I refreshed the page, I was there. And ExpressVPN is super fast. You can stream in HD with zero buffering. Phones, laptops, media devices, smart TVs, and more will all be compatible with ExpressVPN. And they have servers in 94 different countries, so you can gain access to thousands of new shows. So be smart and stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting a fraction of the content. Make sure you get your money's worth at expressvpn.com MLM. Again, don't forget to use my link at expressvpn.com slash MLM to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Now, let me just start off by saying that Soulja Boy really seems to love just rebranding other companies' products by sticking his name on them, marking them up, and then selling them to the public. He did it with the Soldier Board in 2015, and in 2018, he did it again when he announced his new gaming system, Soldier Game Console and Soldier Game Handhelds. Shortly before Christmas, he announced his new gaming system on his website, aptly named Soldier Game. The consoles seemed too good to be true right from the start, because first off, the console version allegedly had 800 built-in games, while the handheld had 3,000 built-in games. The website didn't say what games would be included, but after some investigation, it seems as if they would be from a wide range of gaming companies. In the image released of Soldier Game Handheld, it included pictures of games from Neo Geo GBA and GBC, like The Incredibles, Pokemon, and Zelda. How was he getting access to all of these games? Well, short answer, he wasn't, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. Like I mentioned before, Soldier Boy clearly did not manufacture these devices himself. Instead, they are produced by a company called Ann Burnick that sells retro machines on Amazon. His version of the devices went for $150 for the console and $100 for the handheld device. Not only could people purchase these from Amazon, but they could also find the exact version on AliExpress for as low as $105.99 for the console and $72.99 for the handheld. Despite the rather obvious fact that Soldier Boy was simply buying cheap knockoff consoles, slapping his name on it, then raising the price, he was extremely excited for the new adventure. In an interview with Rolling Stone magazine, the rapper discussed how his love of video games started at a young age, and he says, "'I've always been interested in gaming growing up as a kid. I played games all my life. So once I got into the music industry and I was successful with my music, I always wanted to get into the gaming world. After developing two games with the iPhone, iPad, and Android called Beef with Soldier and Fighting Soldier Draco Edition, he decided instead of making games, he would just make his own console. Apparently, he didn't think this would be too difficult and said during the interview, how hard or how challenging would it be to introduce another console? I knew it was going to take a lot of money and take a team, just a lot to come up with it. So I played with the idea for a while and I finally decided to pursue it. But he didn't really make his own console. He just bought the product. So why did he decide to do that? Well, Rolling Stone asked the exact same thing. He didn't so much answer the question, to be honest. He said after working with Beats by Dre and Monster, he realized their products were all being made in China, so he decided to do the same. 
but the problem here is those are still original products. You simply cannot buy a product that already existed for cheap and just upsell it to fans. Like there's a difference there. When Rolling Stone asked him about the criticism of his consoles being emulators that you can buy cheaper on AliExpress, he responded by saying that, hey, everything new that comes out gets criticized. And once people actually get this product in their hands and review it themselves personally, I think it'll be a different outcome. Well, was he right? No, no, he was not. But give me a second, we'll come back to that too. They also asked if he was worried about any legal ramifications. And Soulja Boy responded to the question by assuring them that everything was 100% legit. Why would he be worried about any legal issues? This had all been researched as he puts it. So he pushed on and when the first console sold, he reacted with gratitude and excitement. But unfortunately for him, and probably very fortunately for everyone else, Soldier Game didn't last very long. As soon as the consoles were released, he tweeted, for anyone that thinks Nintendo is going to sue me, nothing's going to happen, everything is legit. My console isn't going anywhere, trust me. But he was very, very wrong, because within weeks, Nintendo sent Soldier a cease and desist letter, and soon the consoles would be pulled from sale. He tweeted again saying, I had to boss up, I didn't have a choice. But gaming consoles weren't the only thing that he was selling at this time. He also advertised things like Soldier Pad, Soldier Pods, Soldier Phone, and Soldier Watch. At around the same time, he announced the new knockoff consoles. Soldier Boy also announced that he'd be selling tablets, phones, ear pods, and watches. Perhaps not surprisingly, all of these seem to be knockoffs too. This time their design being eerily similar to Apple products. Most notable was the Soldier Watch, which was outrageously similar to and practically identical to an Apple Watch, but at the bargain price of only $19.99. The watch was available in six different colors and according to Soldier Boy himself could text, call, camera, music. That's the quote. This definitely seemed too good to be true, but regardless, people still ended up buying them. A writer for Complex detailed their experiences in ordering the watch, because at first all seemed normal. But when they went to purchase the watch, they were asked an odd question in regards to shipping. Should the watch be shipped from China or the Russian Federation? I don't know about you, but I've never been asked this type of question before. And like the author mentions, I definitely would have more than just a fleeting thought of international identity theft. But unfortunately he did go off to purchase the watch. I say unfortunately because the watch never showed up despite a confirmation email being sent less than a day after confirming it had been shipped. A couple of weeks later, the whole incident with the consoles and Nintendo took place and they were taken off the site, but the watches were still there. However, most people, including the author of the complex piece, had yet to receive the ones they had ordered. The author writes that after three weeks, he decided to send an email to customer support listed on the confirmation email. And I promise you, I'm not kidding. The email was soldierboymp3 at gmail.com. I'm gonna agree with the author here and uh, uh uh-oh, that's a problem. Before long, other fans started to become concerned about their orders as many had not received them or had never been given refunds for the consoles after they had been discounted out of force. One Twitter user tweeted at Soldier Boy and said she had never received her watch despite being charged for it. Then after she attempted to chat with customer service on the help section of the website, she was sent to a security warning instead. You know, those ones that say your connection's not private, attackers might be trying to steal your information with the little red triangle? Yeah, that one. Not exactly what you wanna see when you open up a help section to try and get an explanation of where your order is. As Soldier Boy continued tweeting about Soldier Watch, fans continuously replied asking where their watch was. According to the Daily Beast, multiple fans said they felt they'd been scammed out of anywhere from 10 to $200, either from the purchase of the console or various other soldier technologies. For those that actually did receive their items, they called them trash and horrible. Despite the countless amount of people who had complained about either never getting their items or the items being trash, Soldier Boy denied any wrongdoing and he said, "'Man, that's another rumor they started. I think someone ordered something when the website went down and they didn't get their stuff in time as fast as they thought. So when they went and said that, but it wasn't true. It wasn't true, but countless people complained about it, not just one. After a while, Soldier Boy eventually pulled down both the products and his website. Why he did this, we're not sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was due to a threat or some sort of legal action just because of the sheer volume of angered complaints he seemed to get on the daily. Now, you would think that maybe this was the end of the rapper being involved in gaming or tech industries, but alas, it's not, there's more. So here's more. In February, 2021, Soldier Boy announced that he was returning once again with a brand new console that he claims would be built supposedly from scratch. Perhaps not surprisingly, the comments he received from his announcement mostly consisted of either jokes or angry messages. For some, this was likely just another scam and people cracked jokes at the expense of his history of selling knockoff products. But for others, this announcement just served as a reminder that they either never received their products or never got a refund for the original Soldier Game knockoff. 
So many commented that they were still looking for a refund and asked the rapper to send them money. At first glance, it looked like the new iteration of Soldier Boy's console may actually be legitimate for once. According to Tech Raptor, the new products seem to move away from Soldier's previous strategy of simply buying and reselling knockoff products. This time he has licensed his name to Go Games, an already established gaming company that created TRDR Pocket and makes Android based gaming consoles. The new relationship between TRDR Pocket and Soldier Boy in turn gave way to the new handhold Android gaming system, TRDR Pocket 4G Fireball Red Soldier Boy Edition. So he still hasn't actually created anything new, but this time he just had the sense to join an established company. Either way, it's not the from scratch console he promised his fans. Regardless, the new iteration seemed vastly improved from his last attempt. It's powered by Android 10, has a touchscreen, Bluetooth, and a battery life that bolsters up to eight hours of play. Even better, and what will hopefully save the rapper from any new potential lawsuits is the fact that the console isn't advertising any pre-downloaded game ROMs. Of course, people could download any Android game they want after they buy the console, but no preloaded Pokemon this time around. Currently, the console is selling for $199.99 on TRDR Pocket website or on Amazon. Now, unfortunately, as I said, this was all just at first glance, but we don't do first glances here. We dig a little bit deeper. So upon digging, I found some not so great things. The first, according to the Retro Dodo, as of December 1st, multiple customers who had pre-ordered the consoles over a year prior still had not received their console yet. Others said that despite them paying for a console three months before the article was released, they never got one. Not a great sign considering his track record of never delivering any product. Additionally, Soldier Boy's continuous attempts to pass not only the console, but the company off as his own have created massive distrust among consumers. Gianni O'Connor, the CEO of GoGain, says the rapper owns a few shares depending on how many devices he sells and what contracts and friends in the industry he allows us to work with. He is simply a brand ambassador. However, the rapper has given multiple interviews claiming, or at least implying, that he has built a new gaming company himself. He is even claiming that Nintendo and Google are attempting to buy his company. And again, he doesn't own this company. But regardless, in an interview on Hot 93.7 with Big Rag and DJ Buck, he told the radio hosts, I got Nintendo trying to buy my company right now. We highly evaluated. It's a board, me and the board. We're multimillionaires, the whole team of us. We already in talks with Nintendo and Google and they trying to buy the company from me. It ain't even been out for like a month. According to Retro Dodo, the CEO of Go Games has virtually no problems with the rapper claiming the company is his. As long as he can sell the consoles, it doesn't matter how, and Solja is free to do his thing. Weird thinking and strategy for a company to hold, but okay, I guess. Now, I can't for the life of me figure out why a CEO of a company would allow a scammer to advertise their company or product as being their own. I honestly have to agree with the Retro Dodo that this immediately places questions on the company itself. Allowing a scammer to lie and promote your product definitely seems like it makes you also a scammer. Now, as if all of this wasn't enough, the console itself doesn't seem too great either. In Retro Dodo's review, they say the product was the most uncomfortable handheld they'd ever used when trying to play Call of Duty and Fortnite. This was due to the complete lack of shoulder buttons. You know, the buttons which are standard for modern controllers? Well, those don't exist here. This is because they say they had to play their games on a tiny three and a half inch touch screen, which I'm sure as you can imagine, is a pretty difficult task. And speaking of that touch screen, the game reviewers claimed that it was incorrectly calibrated, causing the screen to react an inch below where they had actually touched. While the console is new, there are not many reviews, maybe because so many people hadn't gotten the ones they ordered, and the ones that do exist seem a little bit suspicious. However, it's still young, so we'll just have to wait and see. But this isn't the only time that Soldier Boy claimed he was the owner of a video game company that he was not. He did it again with Atari in August, 2021. During an Instagram Live, Soldier Boy announced that he was now the owner of Atari. He said the company was apparently real proud of what he had done with Soldier Boy Games console and signed him to a deal so he could revamp the company. However, he was, in fact, not the new owner of Atari. They quickly responded to his announcement with a tweet that read, we know that CEO of Atari is a dream job, but that honor belongs to Wade Rosen. Instead, all Soulja Boy had was a promotion deal with the company where he was being paid with Atari tokens, their cryptocurrency, not even shares of the company. So again, not even close to owning the company. But now you're sitting here going, Blair, all of this is 2021 or older. This is past tense. Well, just you wait because he's got yet one more scam ramping it up in the early part of this year in 2022. So. Let's get into it. In February of this year, the cryptocurrency SafeMoon, which has only existed for a year, was hit with a massive class action lawsuit. And guess who's one of the people stuck in the middle of it? That's right, it's Soldier Boy. 
The lawsuit alleges that multiple celebrities like Jake Paul, Nick Carter, and Soulja Boy knowingly participated in a pump and dump scheme with SafeMoon. The celebrities are accused of misleading investors through their endorsements and various tweets that promoted SafeMoon and led investors to believe that investing in SafeMoon could garner large profits when it really couldn't. The people who tweeted in support of the likely crypto Ponzi scheme were then paid in tokens for their participation. In addition, celebrities are accused of participating in a slow rug pull. This means that while they use their endorsement to pump the value of the currency, they slowly withdrew their investments not to alert new investors to the scheme. As this continued, the cryptocurrency seemed to quickly dissipate and fell so quickly in value by December, 2021, according to the lawsuit. On December 31st, 2021, the price of the SafeMoon token hit a low of 0.00006521 per token, an over 80% drop from its height during the class period, which it has not been able to recover. As of the filing of this complaint, the trading volume for the SafeMoon token has plummeted to only $60,000. Since the lawsuit was filed, none of the celebrities have made any comments, including Soldier Boy. But if his track record is any indication, it's unlikely that he will show any remorse or admit to participating in the scheme in the future. Soldier Boy has continuously lied, scammed, and misled his fans and consumers throughout his career. There's even some debate surrounding him stealing songs from other rappers. Despite this, he has never seemed to face any legal action until now or any form of massive outrage over his actions. Perhaps this is why he continues to lie and scam his way through life. But we'll have to see what he comes to next because maybe this new lawsuit will finally cause him to stop his scamming ways. Though, honestly, I doubt it. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm gonna end today's episode about Soldier Boy, which is a topic I never thought I would ever cover ever, but here we are in 2022 talking about Soldier Boy. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you're liking, following, and subscribing so you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. I appreciate you spending some time here with me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh,